Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. What's up, you guys, and welcome to GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Cynthia. Happy Wednesday, everyone. I hope you all are having a fabulous day. Hopefully, it's productive. You're getting it done. Or if it's your day off, you know, I hope you're just big chilling, big vibes, enjoying, I don't know, maybe a nice cup of coffee. Mm, Okay, so I won't spend too much time on what's been going on in my life because I literally was just here a couple days ago and nothing new has changed for me, okay, within the last 48 hours. Another day, another dollar, that's about it. I'm feeling great. Maybe it's the coffee that's kicking in for me. I don't know. But I am a huge, huge coffee fanatic, y'all. Like, I love coffee. I literally go to sleep at night excited to wake up in the morning for my cup of coffee. Is anyone else like this? Let me know in the comments because I'm sure all my coffee lovers out there feel me. Like there's nothing like waking up to a, just a nice fresh cup of coffee. I drink mine black. Um, I know some of you are like, what? Like, ew. I know. But I've been drinking it this way my whole not my whole life, actually, but I've been drinking it this way for many years. But I trained my taste buds to be this way. So I really fell in love with coffee, I'd say, the beginning of college, right? I mean, you're staying up late, you're partying, you know, sleeping three hours. You need that extra kick. So that's really when I started to drink coffee was my first year at Santa Barbara City College. And I got a job working at a local cafe shop, which is still honestly one of my favorite jobs I ever worked at. Food, amazing. Coffee, amazing. I became a coffee snob because of this cafe I used to work at, okay? Like, it was fair trade, um, just absolutely bomb coffee. Anyway, I was a barista and a cashier at this cafe, so... I would bring people up and I would make, you know, their lattes or cappuccinos, everything. So that's really how I got into coffee was working at this cafe. And when I started drinking coffee, um, I remember I tasted black coffee and I was like, ew, what is this poison? Why does it taste like rat poison and dirt, literally? Um, and I tried iced coffee instead. And I'm like, oh, okay. Iced coffee is a little more drinkable, but still, I need, like, some cream and sugar. So, I would add um, almond milk, and I would then add, I think, like, honey or Splenda to still sweeten it up. And the cook at this cafe that I used to work at, he would always drink his black. And I'm like, how do you do that, you weirdo? And he's like, you literally have to train your taste buds. So, you know, me, I like a challenge. I was like, okay, I want to like see what this is about. You know, is it going to make me feel like a real adult? Am I going to feel like a real adult by being able to sip on eight ounces of black coffee? (laughs) That was my thought process back in uh, 18 years old. So little by little, you know, I would start maybe with four ounces of milk. Um, in my coffee and then slowly but surely I started cutting down I was like three ounces two ounces until eventually I was using you know zero sugar zero milk and I was able to drink my iced coffee black 
So again, that's really how my interest and my fascination with coffee began. I worked at this cafe for a year and a half in Santa Barbara. Then when I moved to the Bay Area, I worked at my first job in the Bay Area. I worked at another cafe um, and I was there only for like three months and I was a barista. And then from there, I had plenty of other jobs. And then I eventually found a coffee shop in downtown San Jose. And I was there for about six or seven months working. And again, just like I was just so fascinated with the different types of coffee, the smells like I just love the smell of coffee. Love, love, love the smell of coffee. So as you guys are able to tell from the excitement of my voice, I am extremely eager to talk and touch on today's subject about coffee. You know, I feel like there's a lot of pros and cons that we hear about. And I'm basically going to be here to dissect them all and talk about it all. We're going to get into first, though, some of the surprising coffee facts. Um, you know, things that we probably didn't know about coffee. And we're going to also talk about, you know, the health benefits of coffee, but as well, maybe some negative health benefits if, you know, you drink too much or whatever the case may be. So a lot of exciting stuff today and let's just get straight into it. Okay. So let's get into, you know, some surprising coffee facts that I'm sure will be able to perk up your morning or perk up your afternoon, depending what time of the day you're tuning in to today's episode, right? So you pour it without thinking, right? Or more likely to help you start thinking. <laughs> but there's a fascinating backstory behind, you know, our morning cup of coffee or our two cups of coffee or our three morning cups of coffee, depending on what type of day you're having. So here's what goes into each cup of brewed beans or seeds. So the first, uh, the drink dates back to 800 A.D. Legend has it that 9th century goat herders noticed the effect caffeine had on their goats who appeared to dance, and I put that in air quotes, like dance, after eating the fruit of the coffee plant. A local monk then made a drink with the produce and found that it kept him awake at night. Thus, the original cup of coffee was born. So, she's been hanging around for quite some time, coffee, caffeine, okay? So, She's been around for quite some time. She's been around the block. Another really interesting fact about coffee is that coffee beans, I actually didn't know this, you guys. Coffee beans are technically seeds. They're the pits of the cherry-like berries found on the flowering shrubs, but we call them beans because of the resemblance to legumes. But they're, in fact, seeds, you guys. So coffee beans are, in fact, seeds. Also, you can eat coffee cherries as a food. Early on, people mix coffee berries with fat to create an energy-rich snack ball, according to PBS. And they would also ferment the pulp to make a wine-like drink, which sounds so tasty and so yummy, right? Like, you said wine, you said cherry, mm, I want it. <laughs> Another cool fact about coffee. There are two main types. Um, Arab, oh my god, I'm having like issues talking right now. Arabica and Robusta. Growers predominantly plant the Arabica species, although less popular, Robusta tastes slightly more bitter and contains more caffeine. And I think Robusta is the one I need because I drink so much coffee, you guys. I drink like two 16 ounces, two 16 ounces of iced coffee. And I Honestly, at this point, I think I drink it just because it's a habit. Um, I'm sh I, let me know if you guys are the same way. Like my mom and I are the same way. We don't necessarily drink coffee because it like wakes us up or gives us a good boost of energy. No, I mainly drink it because one, I love the um, smell of it in the morning. Two, I'm just used to, you know, it's a habit I've created over the last like, five six years of my life like every morning is coffee that's the first thing I do in the morning like I do not do anything else except go downstairs and either make a cup of coffee on my Keurig or pour it over ice in a cup um 
And I really, I'm pretty familiar with the Arabica um, type. I feel like that's the most, and like I said, it is, growers do predominantly plant th- this specific species, the Arabica. And you t- uh, see it too, like if you buy um, coffee beans from somewhere, like it'll display on there the type of uh, beans. And usually I've seen Arabica, but Robusta, I actually don't believe I've tried her, but I need to because if she contains more coffee, then I'm going to need that, especially for a girl like me. You know, she's hustling and bustling by 4 or 5 a.m. already. So I'm going to need Robusta to come into my life. I'm going to come to a very brief break right now. And when we come back, I'm going to share with you guys more interesting facts about coffee. Are you looking to learn more about the latest trends from the fitness world? Are you confused by all the different trends that are out there? The GSMC Fitness Podcast is the place for you. The GSMC Fitness Podcast is the place to come for people of all skill and interest levels. Join us as we explore the latest trends in the fitness world. Does that new exercise really work? Should I try yoga? Whatever your question, chances are good you'll find an answer on the GSMC Fitness Podcast. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast. So let's just continue on with the conversation of me sharing facts, interesting facts regarding coffee. Now, this next one, some of you, it may not come as a surprise to a lot of you. Um, It surely didn't really come surprising to me. I did have maybe another country in mind, uh, but in case you didn't know, Brazil grows the most coffee in the world, okay? My second choice actually would have been Mexico. I would have guessed Mexico first. Um, But Brazil grows the most coffee in the world. Today, Brazil produces about a third of the world's supply, you guys, according to the International Coffee Organization, about twice as much as the second place holder, Vietnam. So Vietnam is actually the second... Um, mo or the second country that grows the most coffee in the world, which is pretty cool, honestly. Next, only two states, only two United or U.S. states produce coffee. Okay, Kona Coffee is the United States gift to the coffee world. I'm sure we've heard of Kona Coffee. For all my coffee lovers, fanatics out there, you must be familiar with Kona Coffee. Because coffee traditionally grows best in climates along the equator, Hawaii's weather is optimal for harvesting beans. And California also recently got into the coffee game with dozens of farms now churning out pricey premium bags. Of course, pricey. You know, everything in California is pricey. Next, espresso means pressed out in Italian, which I actually didn't know, but it makes a lot of sense. Um, This refers to the way espresso is made. You know, you're forcing boiling water through pressed coffee grounds. And although espresso has more caffeine per volume than coffee, it would take three shots to equal the amount in a regular cup of coffee. I actually used to, that used to be my drink, actually. I used to get um, a double shot ice espresso with a little bit of oat milk or like almond milk on top. To be honest, I don't know why I've stopped doing that. I think it's because when they pour it to me in a cup, it's like so tiny that I'm like, oh, I need more. So um, I definitely am one of those people that like take my time drinking my coffee. Like, you know, I'll take a sip and like 20 minutes later, I'm like, oh, wait, I forgot about it. So I'm like drinking it. So I feel like espresso, I just like it runs out so quickly. I'm like, oh, I need like four shots to fill up my eight ounce cup. But then that would like probably have me wired. 
This is another cool, interesting fact. The world's most expensive coffee can cost more than $600 a pound. Again, the world's most expensive coffee can cost more than $600 a pound. Okay, that is a pretty penny. One of the most coveted varieties comes from the fikis of an Asian palm civet. The cat-like creature eats fruit, including coffee cherries, but is unable to digest the beans. The excreted seeds produce a smooth, less acidic brew called kopi luwak, but the means of production has drawn criticism from animal welfare activists. Um, so that's why it's not you know, as popular to be sold um, across countries and whatnot because of you know the animal rights and people feeling like taking advantage of this cat-like creature um, just to produce, you know, these beans. Also, another interesting fact. Multiple people have tried to ban coffee. Can you imagine? Like, what would our world be without coffee? I just can't. I would not be able to live and go through my life like that. So, back in 1511... Leaders in Mecca believed it stimulated radical thinking and outlawed the drink. Some 16th century Italian clergymen also tried to ban coffee because they believed it to be satanic. Okay. However, Pope Clement the the 12th loved coffee so much that he lifted the ban and had coffee baptized in 1600. That's crazy. Even as recently as the 18th century, the Swedish government made both coffee and coffee paraphernalia, including cups and dishes, illegal for its supposed ties to rebellious sentiment. This is, people have some wild ideas, y'all. Like, what do you mean it's satanic? It's crazy. Also, (laughs) in case you didn't know, you probably could have known this. You maybe tried this yourself. But you can actually, just how you can overdose on drugs, you can overdose on coffee, y'all. Okay? But don't worry, okay? You would need literally to drink about 30 cups in a very short uh, time period to get close to a lethal dose of caffeine. So as long as you don't drink like 30 cups within like two hours, I think you're in the clear. Also, Finland is home to the biggest coffee lovers. So it looks like I'm going to Finland because I need to be around people who are just as passionate about coffee as I am. The average adult in Finland goes through 27 and a half pounds of coffee each year, according to the International Coffee Organization. So compare that to a measly 11 pounds per American. So... Finland definitely, definitely love coffee. So that means I need to go over there because they probably have some bomb coffee shops that I need to go visit um, and try out. Also, okay, this fact is going to make a lot of us perk up. All of us coffee drinkers, okay? Coffee drinkers tend to live longer. Yes, it's true. Research has linking moderate consumption about three to four cups per day with a longer lifespan, plus a reduced risk of cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and Parkinson's, according to Harvard Health Publishing. If Harvard says I'm going to live longer drinking three to four cups of coffee, then I'm going to do just exactly that. You hear me? Also, The largest cup of coffee ever filled was a nine foot, nine foot tall cup. How? Okay, but it's true. The 3,487 gallon serving earned a Guinness World Record in 2012. Look it up. Next. The Boston Tea Party helped popularize coffee in America. In the lead up to the Revolutionary War, I know I'm going to get a little bit historical on y'all right now, but just stay with me. In the lead up to the the, uh, Revolutionary War, it became patriotic to sip Java in Luti, um, PBS reveals. 
The Civil War also made the drink more pervasive because it helped energize tired troops. Another interesting fact. Decaf actually does not mean caffeine free. So for all of my people who go into a coffee shop and they're like, I want decaf. There's actually still caffeine in there. An eight ounce brewed cup of decaf coffee actually contains two to 12 milligrams of caffeine. In comparison, though, a regular cup of coffee supplies between 95 to 200 milligrams, which, you know, like while one can of cola has about 23 to 35 milligrams of caffeine. So really, if you're looking for an energy boost and you're trying to decide between a can of Coke and a cup of coffee, you're better off going with a cup of coffee. That's going to energize you more than a can of cola. And it's like the healthier, better choice, right? As Harvard Health Publishing stated, coffee drinkers tend to live longer. So if you want to live longer, then go ahead and pour yourself that cup of coffee, okay? Next, the word coffee comes from the Arabic word for wine. Koa later became kave in Turkish, and then coffee in Dutch, which is where we get the English word coffee. Interesting, right? Next, Starbucks opens an average of two stores per day. So you can now order grande lattes at more than 29,000 locations around the globe, 47 years after the first store launch in Seattle, which I have actually visited, okay? My girls and I took a really cute weekend trip to Seattle um, last March. um, And we went to, what was it, like Pike's Market, I think I believe it's called. And it was such a cute area. I'm honestly in love with Seattle. I definitely want to go visit again. And we visited, you know, like the first Starbucks, of course. It was like a long, 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 line. But we still waited. You know, we had nothing else to do. So, yeah, I visited the first Starbucks in Seattle. Also, one cup of black coffee, black coffee, a.k.a. no cream or sugar, only has one calorie. So, again... Adding sweeteners and cream and other mixins can quickly jack up the total. So, for instance, a venti java chip frappuccino from Starbucks contained 88 grams of sugar and 600 calories. That's more than a McDonald's Big Mac, you guys. I'm sorry to put it into that perspective, but it is true, okay? So think about that next time you want extra, a, a, an extra pump of this, an extra pump of that. Next time you are at the Starbucks drive through We're going to come to a very brief break right now. And when we come back, we're going to wrap up these interesting facts and then finally move into some of the health benefits of coffee. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Hey guys, and welcome back to GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast. 
So let's quickly just wrap up these fun facts and then we'll move into some of the health benefits of coffee. So another really cool, interesting fact is that Teddy Roosevelt reportedly coined Maxwell House's slogan. So the U.S. 26th president, Teddy Roosevelt, loved coffee so much that one of his sons described his custom cup as more in the nature of a bathtub, okay? On a 1907 visit to Andrew Jackson's former estate, the commander-in-chief supposedly dubbed a cup of Maxwell House Joe good to the last drop, which is a catchphrase still used today. Next, you can order coffee 25,000 different ways at Dunkin', okay? That's insane. 25,000 different ways, combinations to make coffee at Dunkin'. The recently renamed donut chain did the math on its customizable Java drinks, and it sells about 2 billion cups globally per year, which is enough for customers to pick each option 80,000 times. Can you imagine having that many options? I feel like it would overwhelm me. I'm a creature of habit. So like once I try something and I like it, I'm not going to switch around and try different things. I'm going to stick to what I know because I'm going to get pissed when I order something and it tastes like caca. And it's like, well, great. I'm stuck with this now because I'm the type like I'm too shy to go back up to where I ordered my food or my drink. and Be like, I actually don't like this. Like I'm very like, oh, you know, I take my L and keep it moving. That's just the type of person I am. All right, y'all. And for the final interesting fact regarding coffee, the coffee grounds can beautify your skin. So save your leftover beans for a DIY scrub, which um, I'm sure this is like for all of my YouTubers out there, YouTube fanatics. You've probably seen like a lot of people recommend like coffee scrubs to like exfoliate your legs. It's kind of the similar thing for your face. So coffee grounds are physical exfoliators that can lift off dead skin cells, making skin feel smooth and look brighter. And caffeine is thought to improve blood circulation in the skin, but there isn't yet sufficient clinical data on its use in like topical products. So like literally physical coffee grounds, like beat up, of course, like don't like grab a bean and just like rub it on your skin. So I would buy it probably pre-packaged or if you're like a DIY do-it-yourself type of person, then uh, mix some of, you know, crush the coffee grounds and mix it with, you know, other, like, a lotion or something. I don't know, man. I'm not a DIY person. Like, I just buy prepackaged and, like, go. So, you guys, that's basically all of, or just some. I'm sure there's many more, but those are some of the interesting facts uh, surrounding coffee. Let me know in the comments which one was the most surprising to you. Or if you know of another interesting fact regarding coffee, then drop it in the comments because I would love, love to read it. And I'm sure the rest of the listeners would love to as well. So now that that's done, let's move on to some of the health benefits of coffee based on science, okay? Um, And then later we'll get into some of the cons, some of the negative side effects of coffee. So if you haven't been already to tell, coffee is one of the world's most popular beverages, right? Thanks to its high levels of, you know, antioxidants and beneficial nutrients, it also seems to be quite healthy, Studies show that coffee drinkers, like I mentioned earlier, have a much lower risk of several serious diseases such as Parkinson's disease and type 2 diabetes. So first of many health benefits of coffee is, of course, that it can improve your energy levels and just like get your think, your thought process going. Coffee can help people feel less tired and increase energy levels, right? And that's because it contains a stimulant called caffeine that I'm sure we're all pretty familiar with. And it's the most commonly consumed psychoactive substance in the world. After you drink coffee, the caffeine is absorbed into your bloodstream. And from there, it travels to your brain. 
in the brain, caffeine blocks the inhibitory neurotransmitter adenosine. When this happens, the amount of other neurotransmitters like norepinephrine and dopamine increases, leading to enhanced firing of neurons. I know I'm getting real nerdy and technical right now, but just stay with me. Many controlled studies on humans show that coffee improves various aspects of brain function, including memory, mood, vigilance, energy levels, reaction times, and general mental function. I mean, we feel this, right? Like a lot of us, we just like instantly feel more awake once we've had our cup of coffee. So again, caffeine blocks an inhibitory neurotransmitter in your brain, which causes a stimulant effect. And this improves energy levels, mood, and various aspects of brain function. Another cool health benefit of coffee It can help you burn fat. Caffeine is found in almost every commercial fat-burning supplement, and for good reason. It's one of the few natural substances proven to aid fat burning. Several studies show that caffeine can boost your metabolic rate by 3 to 11%, okay? Other studies indicate that caffeine can specifically increase fat burning by as much as 10% in obese individuals and 29% in lean people. However, it's possible that these effects diminish in long-term coffee drinkers. So if you're like me who's been drinking coffee for a hot minute now, get my pun there, hot minute, anyway. Um, yeah, I it, like I'm not drinking coffee to get like leaner, like... Don't drink, you know, down hella cups of coffee every day to think like, don't drink what I'm trying to say. Don't drink hella coffee to try and uh, replace good eating habits and good nutrition, especially if your goal right now is to, you know, lose weight, uh, lose body fat. Don't just drink coffee. Okay. Like, don't do that. (laughs) Next. Coffee can drastically improve physical performance. Caffeine stimulates your nervous system, signaling fat cells to break down body fat. But it also increases epinephrine, which is adrenaline levels in your blood. This is a fight or flight hormone, which prepares your body for intense physical exertion. Caffeine breaks down body fat, making free fatty acids available as fuel. Given these effects, it's unsurprising that caffeine can improve physical performance by 11 to 12 percent on average. So it makes sense to have a strong cup of coffee about half an hour before you head to the gym, right? Or, I mean, I know a lot of people tend to opt for pre-workout, but sometimes pre-workout can be a little too much to handle for some i know i'm definitely one of those people uh one time my boyfriend let me uh drink some of his pre-workout before we went on a run like an upward hike outside it was terrible and i drank this disgusting grape flavored pre-workout and i literally like threw up in the middle of the hike I think it was also because it was grape flavored and I'm not a fan of anything grape flavored. It tastes like medicine to me. So anyway, all in all, (laughs) what I'm trying to say, caffeine can increase adrenaline levels and release fatty acids from your fat tissues. So it also leads to significant improvements in physical performance. Next, coffee contains essential nutrients. So Many of the nutrients in coffee beans make their way into the finished brewed coffee. A single cup of coffee contains a riboflavin, which is vitamin B2. Um, it contains pantothenic acid, which is vitamin B5. Uh, it contains manganese and potassium, uh, magnesium and niacin, which is vitamin B3. And although this may not seem like a big deal, Most people enjoy several cups per day, like myself. So allowing these amounts to quickly add up. So you're really getting a lot of essential nutrients from your cup of coffee. But again, this is only if you're not adding like 
immense amounts of cream and sugar and chocolate pumps of this and salted caramel of that. So if you the most minimal cup of coffee, the more minimal, the better. If you can drink it black, then do it black. So again, lots of amazing essential nutrients in a cup of coffee. And we're going to come to a very brief break right now. And when we come back, we'll discuss more and talk about more of the health benefits surrounding coffee. The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere where you find podcasts just type gsmc in the search bar Hey guys, and welcome back to GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast. So like I said, we're just going to get straight into it, continuing on with the conversation of all the amazing pros of coffee. Next, coffee may lower your risk of type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is a major health problem, as we know, currently affecting millions of people worldwide. It's characterized by elevated blood sugar levels caused by insulin resistance or a reduced ability to secrete insulin. For some reason, coffee drinkers have a significantly reduced risk of type 2 diabetes. Studies observe that people who drink the most coffee have a 23 to 50% lower risk of getting this disease. And one study showed a reduction as high as 67%, which is insane. According to a large review of 18 studies and a total of 457,922 people, each daily cup of coffee was associated with a 7% reduced risk of type 2 diabetes. So again... Several observational studies show that coffee drinkers have a much lower risk of type 2 diabetes and of other serious um, chronic illnesses. Next, coffee may protect you from Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Alzheimer's disease is the most common neurodegenerative disease and the leading cause of dementia worldwide. This condition usually affects people over 65, and there is no known cure, unfortunately. However, there are several things you can do to prevent the disease from occurring in the first place. This includes the usual suspects like eating, you know, eating healthy and exercising, but drinking coffee may be incredibly effective as well. Several studies show that coffee drinkers have up to a 65% lower risk of Alzheimer's disease. Also, it can lower or may lower your risk of Parkinson's. Parkinson's disease is the second most common neurodegenerative condition right behind Alzheimer's. It's caused by the death of dopamine-generating neurons in your brain. As with Alzheimer's, there is no known cure which makes it that much more important to focus on prevention. Studies show that coffee drinkers have a much lower risk of Parkinson's disease with the risk reduction ranging from 32 to 60%. In this case, the caffeine itself appears to be beneficial as people who drink decaf don't have a lower risk of Parkinson's. Also, coffee may protect your liver 
So your liver is an amazing organ that carries out hundreds and hundreds of important functions. Several common diseases primarily affect the liver, including hepatitis, fatty liver disease, and many others. Many of these conditions can lead to uh, cirrhosis in which your liver is largely replaced by scar tissue. Interestingly, coffee may protect against cirrhosis. People who drink four or more cups per day have an up to 80% lower risk. So it looks like I need to start upping up my coffee intake because two is just not cutting it, okay? Also, coffee can help you fight depression and just make you feel happier. We all know depression is a serious mental disorder that causes a significantly reduced quality of life. It's very common as about 4.1% of people in the U.S., currently meet the criteria for clinical depression. In a Harvard study published in 2011, women who drink or who drank four more cups of coffee per day had a 20% lower risk of becoming depressed. And then another study in uh, a little over 208,000 individuals found that those who drank four more cups per day were 53% less likely to die by suicide. So coffee appears to lower your risk of developing depression and may dramatically reduce suicide risk. Next, it also may lower risk of certain types of cancer. Cancer is one of the world's leading causes of death. It is characterized by uncontrolled cell growth in your body. And coffee appears to be protective against two types of cancer, liver and collectoral cancer. Liver cancer is a third leading cause of cancer death in the world, while collectoral cancer ranks fourth. Studies show that coffee drinkers have up to a 40% lower risk of liver cancer. Similarly, One study in over 489,000 people found that those who drank four to five cups of coffee per day had a 15% lower risk of collectoral cancer. Also, coffee doesn't cause heart disease and may lower stroke risk. It's often claimed that caffeine can increase your blood pressure. This is true, but with the rise of only 3 to 4 milligrams, the effect is small and usually dissipates if you drink coffee regularly. However, it may persist in some people, so keep that in mind if you have elevated blood pressure. That being said, studies don't support the idea that coffee raises your risk of heart disease. On the contrary, as I stated already, There is some evidence that women who drink coffee have a reduced risk. Some studies also show that coffee drinkers have a 20% lower risk of stroke. So coffee may cause mild increases in blood pressure. If you're someone who, you know, already deals with hypertension, it could increase, which, um, again, usually diminishes over time. And coffee drinkers do not have an increased risk of heart disease and have a slightly lower risk of stroke. Next, it also may help you live longer. We already briefly touched on this, but I'm going to go a little more into detail. Given that coffee drinkers are, you know, less likely to get many diseases, according to all of this evidence I'm sharing with you all, It makes sense that coffee could help you live longer. Several observational studies indicate that coffee drinkers have a lower risk of death. In two very large studies, drinking coffee was associated with a 20% reduced risk of death in men and a 26% decreased risk of death in women over 18 to 24 years. This effect appears particularly strong in people with type 2 diabetes. In one 20-year study, individuals with diabetes who drank coffee had a 30% lower risk of death. So again, 
Several studies show that coffee drinkers live longer and have a lower risk of premature death. And lastly, uh, coffee is the biggest source of antioxidants in the Western diet. For people who eat a standard Western diet, coffee may be one of the healthiest aspects of you know, your diet if you don't add a whole bunch, you know, a gallon of cream and sugar, of course. And that's because coffee is quite high in antioxidants. Studies show that many people get more antioxidants from coffee than from fruits and vegetables combined. In fact, coffee may be one of the healthiest beverages on the planet. So the bottom line here, you guys, is, you know, coffee is a highly popular beverage around the globe that boasts a number of impressive health benefits. Not only can your daily cup of joe help you feel more energized, uh, burn fat, and improve physical performance, it may also lower your risk of several conditions such as type 2 diabetes, cancer, certain cancers like liver and collectoral cancer, and Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. If you enjoy its taste and tolerate its caffeine content, I suggest don't hesitate to pour yourself a cup or more throughout the day because I know I will not. So you guys, I'm going to cut into a very, very brief break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the negative side effects, some of the cons of drinking too much coffee, too much caffeine. We'll be right back. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. What's up, you guys, and welcome back to GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast. We are now entering our final segment for today's episode. Hopefully, everything, all this information that I have been spewing at you has captivated your intention and has kept your interest all the way up to this point because we're now getting into the nitty gritty. We're getting onto the negative side effects of drinking too much coffee and you know, like I said, as healthy, as incredibly healthy caf- uh, coffee may be, um, drinking too much of anything is not good, right? High doses of coffee or caffeine in general um, may give you some unpleasant and even dangerous side effects. Research has shown that your genes have a major influence on your tolerance to it, which I didn't know. And some can consume much more caffeine than others. I'm one of those people. And, you know, some of us can consume much more caffeine than others without experiencing some of these negative um, effects. And the first one that I think is actually really, really common, um, and I think this is a reason why there's a lot of people who are not coffee drinkers is for this specific reason. And it's due to anxiety. Okay, and I 1000% feel you because I myself deal with um, anxiety and oftentimes I have felt myself feel nauseous after drinking a cup of coffee. Like literally I feel so sick and like jittery and like I like I need to throw up and I know all my people who like suffer with anxiety 
understand where I'm coming from. So like there are like randomly those times where it happens to me and I'm like, whoa and then i'll take like a coffee break like i won't drink coffee for like two weeks or so and then get back to it so as we know coffee caffeine in general um is known to increase alertness and it works by blocking the effects of adenosine which is a brain chemical that makes you feel tired and at the t- uh, at the same time it triggers the release of adrenaline, the fight or flight hormone associated with increased energy. However, at high doses, these effects may become more pronounced, leading to anxiety and nervousness. In fact, caffeine-induced anxiety disorder is one of four caffeine-related syndromes listed in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, which is published by the American Psychiatric Association. So, like, it's it's legit. It's a, it's a thing, like, having caffeine-induced anxiety disorder, which I have experienced um, a handful of times. Extremely high daily intakes of 1,000 milligrams or more per day have been reported to cause nervousness, uh, jitteriness and similar symptoms in most people whereas even a moderate intake may lead to similar effects in caffeine sensitive individuals additionally modest doses have been shown to cause rapid breathing and increased stress levels when consumed in one sitting which again i have felt like i've experienced like really fast um and like aggressive heart palpitations. Like literally my heart is beating through my chest. I'm breathing very fast and heavy. So it's definitely a thing. One study in particular in 25 healthy men found that those who ingested approximately 300 milligrams of caffeine experience more than double the stress of those who take a placebo. Interestingly, Stress levels were similar between regular and less frequent caffeine consumers, suggested the compound may have the same effect on stress levels regardless of whether you drink it habitually. Nevertheless, these results are preliminary. Um, Coffee's caffeine content is highly variable. Uh, For reference, a large or a grande uh, cup of coffee at Starbucks contains about uh, 330 milligrams of caffeine. If you ever notice that you often feel nervous or jittery, it might be a good idea to look at your caffeine intake and, you know, cut it back, take it a few notches down. The second side effect of consuming too much coffee or caffeine in general is insomnia. Caffeine's ability to help people stay awake is one of its, you know, most prized qualities. That's why people drink so much coffee. But on the other hand, too much of it can make it difficult to get enough restorative sleep, which is so, so important. I am like the biggest advocate of sleep there is out there. Studies have found that Higher caffeine intake appears to increase the amount of time it takes to fall asleep. And it may also decrease total sleeping time, especially in the elderly. By contrast, low or moderate amounts of caffeine don't seem to affect sleep very much in people considered good sleepers or even those with self-reported insomnia. You may not realize that Too much caffeine is interfering with your sleep if you underestimate the amount of caffeine you're taking in. Although coffee and tea are the most concentrated sources of caffeine, it is also found in soda, um, cocoa, energy drinks, and several types of medication. For example, an energy shot may contain up to 350 milligrams of caffeine, while some energy drinks provide as much as a whopping 500 milligrams per can, which is so high. Importantly, the amount of caffeine you can consume without affecting your sleep will depend, again, on your genetics and on other factors. In addition, caffeine consumed later in the day may interfere with sleep because it affects 
um, can, you know, take several hours to wear off, which is so not like me. Like I'm one of those caffeine tolerant people. I have a very high caffeine intake, um, and high caffeine tolerance that I legit can take drink a cup of coffee before going to bed or before taking a nap and I'll be fine. I'm one of the lucky ones. Research has shown that while caffeine remains in your system for an average of five hours, the time period may range from one and a half hours to nine hours, depending on the individual. And one study investigated how the timing of caffeine ingestion affects sleep. Researchers gave 12 healthy adults 400 milligrams of caffeine either six hours before bedtime, three hours before bedtime, or immediately prior to bedtime. Both the time it took all three groups to fall asleep and the time they spent awake at night increased significantly. These results suggest that it's important to pay attention to both the amount and timing of caffeine to optimize your sleep. Also, Another negative side effect or downside of caffeine or too much coffee are digestive issues. Many people find that a morning cup of coffee helps, you know, get their bowels moving. It's a laxative. Um, And coffee's laxative effect has been attributed to the release of gastrin, which is a hormone the stomach produces that speeds up activity in the colon. Which is why you will, you know, you'll notice once you drink a cup of coffee, you need to go to the bathroom within like 10 minutes. And what's more, decaffeinated coffee has been shown to produce a similar response. However, caffeine itself also seems to stimulate bowel movement by increasing peristalsis, which is the contractions that move through the, uh, through your digestive tract. Given this effect, it's not surprising that large doses of caffeine may lead to loose stools or even diarrhea in some people. Although for many years, coffee was believed to cause stomach ulcers, a large study of more than 8,000 people didn't find any link between the two. On the other hand, some studies suggest that caffeinated beverages may worsen gastroesophageal um, esophageal reflux disease in some people. And this seems to be especially true of coffee. In a small study, when five healthy adults drank caffeinated water, they experienced a relaxation of the muscle that keeps stomach contents from moving up into the throat. Um, and since coffee can have major effects on digestive function, you may want to cut back on the amount you drink or switch to tea if you experience any major digestive issues. And lastly, the final uh, negative side effect we'll discuss and talk about regarding coffee is muscle breakdown. Rhabdomyolysis is a very serious condition in which damaged muscle fibers enter the bloodstream, leading to kidney failure and other problems. Common causes of rhabdomyolysis includes trauma, infection, drug abuse, muscle strain, and bites from poisonous snakes or insects. In addition, there have been several reports of rhabdomyolysis related to excessive caffeine intake, although this is relatively rare. In one case, a woman developed nausea, um, vomiting, and dark urine after drinking 32 ounces of coffee containing roughly 565 um, milligrams of caffeine. Uh, Fortunately, she recovered after being treated with medication and fluids. Um, But importantly, this is a large dosage of caffeine to consume within a short period of time, especially for someone who isn't used to it or is highly sensitive you know, um, to its effects. So in order to reduce the risk of rhabdomyolysis, it's best to limit your intake to about 250 milligrams of caffeine per day, unless you're used to consuming more. 
So you guys, that's going to wrap up today's episode here at the GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed today's discussion. Um, After hearing all of the pros and cons, are you going to still continue drinking coffee? Are you going to keep it or leave it? Let me know in the comments. I'm going to let you guys know right now. I'm still keeping it, okay? I'm disregarding all of the negative side effects, and I'm going to keep trucking on with my morning cup of coffee or two every day. So if you guys enjoyed today's today's discussion, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, all of that good stuff because that tremendously helps the show, and I'll catch you guys here next week. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Health and Wellness Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program